So in this problem, what I'm asking you to do is not only, not only complete the square, I'm asking you guys to complete the square so that we can find the foci, the center, the foci, the center, um, the vertices, and the covertices. Okay. Now, if you guys look at my two equations over here, do you guys see how these two equations have binomials squared? Do you guys see that? Do you see how these have binomials squared? This does not have any binomial squared at all. No. So what we need to do is we need to create a binomial squared. Well, we create a binomial squared by creating perfect square trinomials. So the first thing you're going to want to do is group your x's and group your y's. 3x squared minus 12x plus 5y squared plus 30y. And then I'll subtract the 40 so it's on the other side. Turn my phone again. Thanks, my phone. God. Same. OK. Um, so the main important thing is we need to create a binomial squared for the x's, and we need to create a binomial squared for the y's. Does everybody agree with me? Yeah. OK. So binomial squared for the x's and a binomial squared for the y's. Now, we cannot create, we cannot complete the square um, when we have a, a is our variable in for, when we have an a in for there, for a and our ax squared. Do you guys agree with me? We have a x squared plus bx. But the problem is we need to find that plus c. But we can't find the plus c until we get rid of that a. A always has to be 1 when we're completing the square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the 3. By factoring out the 3, I'm now left with x squared minus 4x plus, factor out the 5, y squared plus 6y. Huh? I'm not done yet. Now do you guys see how that a, that number in front of my quadratic, is now 1? Does everybody see that? Does everybody see that? So neat. Do you see that? Everybody see how the a is 1? So now, once we know that a is 1, what we can do is the process of com is finding the value c that what we say completes the square. Well, then how do you do that? Well, again, we have a x squared plus b x plus c. We need to figure out that c. So what we're going to do is take b, divide it by 2, and square it. Negative 4 divided by 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. We do the same thing over here. Just remember that a is 1. So in this case, I do 6 divided by 2. Square it. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Now, what do we do? Well, remember, we're trying, to we're trying to find a perfect square trinomial, right? Yeah. So these values that we're finding, we're going to add them inside the parentheses. So I have 3 times x squared minus 4x. I'm going to add 4. And then I have plus 5 times y squared plus 6y plus 9. And then that equals negative 40. But remember, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side, correct? So if I added a 4 here, I have to add a 4 over there, correct? Yeah, you correct. Yeah. So I have to add 4, but I didn't really add a 4. That 4 is being multiplied by a 3 by a distributive property, correct? So therefore, I have to multiply this 4 by a 3. Then I have to add a 9. And this 9 is being multiplied by a 5. Now, the whole purpose, again, guys, the whole point of creating perfect square trinomials. Perfect square trinomials can be factored down to what? Binomials squared. squared. They, they're all going to be factored to binomial squared. Think about it. What two numbers multiply to give you 4, add to give you negative 4? There's only one option. 
negative 2. Negative x minus 2 times x minus 2. So this becomes 3 times x minus 2 squared. Completing the square, you're always going to get a factored form of a binomial squared. Plus 5. y squared plus 6y. What two numbers multiply to give you 9? Add to give you 6. y plus 3. y plus 3 squared. If you don't believe me, multiply them out. Then we have to do this. So what's negative 40 plus 12 plus 45? Huh. Did I do that right then? That's not a fun answer. I don't see anything wrong with my math, but geez, give us that answer. We can do it. I'll show you guys what to do. But the other, an the other answer in your homework is not that bad. Let me just double check. I didn't check the answer on this one. 8 to which problem is this? Uh, it's not giving me that equation. Hmm. Oh, I'm an idiot. I wrote the problem wrong. That's 42. I was wondering. I'm like, what happened here? So therefore, it gives you 15, right? OK. Sorry, I was like, that, that, I mean, it can happen, but it's not very likely that they'd be using those answers. All right, so now we still got to solve for 50. We still got to get this equal to 1, right? All the equations over there are equal to 1. So now you divide by 15 on both sides, correct? Divide by 15 on both sides. Does everybody follow me? Just like distributive property, guys, if you're multiplying an expression by a number, you multiply both those terms by that number, right? Distributive property at 3, you multiply it by both of them. If you're dividing an expression by a number, you have to divide the 15 into both of those. So now, what's 3 over 15? That gets reduced to 1 over 5. One over five. And then this, 5 over, one, 5 over 15, gets reduced to? 15 over 15 is 1. So now I have completed the square, Jacob. I have now completed the square. Now, before I can find the center, the vertices, and all that kind of stuff, I need to, um, well, actually, I can find the center. The center is just what? H, K which is h is always with the x, and k is always with the 3. Remember, it's x opposite of h, x opposite of k. So the center is pretty easy. Center is 2 comma negative 3. Now, if I was going to do this, I would definitely, or if I was going to do this problem, I would definitely plot this problem. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Just so I can start to visualize what type of problem I'm, what type uh, where the axis is. The major important thing we want to do is identify, is this a major vertical axis? Or is, or, I'm sorry, is our major axis vertical or is it horizontal? Yes, Rambo. Three over 15 reduces to what fraction? One over five. Do you agree? Three over 15, same thing as one over five? 5 over 15 is the same thing as 1 over 3. I just don't write the 1 there. Does that make sense, though? OK. Does everybody understand how I get 2, how I got 2, negative 3? If you don't, raise your hand. Is everybody OK? Adina, you, have, you didn't have a question? OK. Um, so now, now that we found the center, we need to find the major axis. So what is always bigger, A or B? A. A. So we look at, so which one's A squared? 5. Five. Is A squared under the x or the y? X. X. So therefore, is it horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Horizontal. So that means this is my major axis. Right? That's the major axis. So I would just draw that in there and say, that is my major axis. Then 
if that's my major axis, then I know here is my minor axis. Why is that so important? Because what goes on my major axis? My vertices and my cent um, foci, right? So if my vertices are going to the left and to the right, they're going to the left and the right a distance of what? No, what, in what value? What letter? A. A. They're going a distance. The distance from the center to your vertices, guys, is A. Well, what is A squared equal to in this problem? Uh, two what is A squared equal to? Five. Oh. A squared, A. A is larger than B. A is always larger than B. A squared is the formula. A squared is equal to five. So therefore, A is equal to the square root of five. five. So that means from my center at 2, negative 3, I'm going to the left square root of 5, and I'm going to the right square root of 5. Does everybody see that? Yeah. So what should I be adding the square root of 5 to? The x coordinate of the center or the y coordinate of the center? If I'm showing left and right. The x coordinate. So all you need to write is vertices is 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. You don't need to approximate answers. You can leave it as the exact form. Sven, I'd highly recommend that you have this written down, because on your quiz, that's the way that I'm going to accept your answer. OK? The next one is the foci, because the foci also lies on this, correct? Okay. So we know that a squared equals 5. That means b squared is equal to 3. So b is equal to the square root of 3. So if I know that a squared is 5 and b squared is 3, can I figure out what c squared is? OK, um, do I have room over here? Barely. So I could do c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared equals 5 minus 3. c squared equals 2. So therefore, c equals the square root of 2. Does everybody follow me? Yeah, why, why should you say c squared? Huh? If c squared is equal to 2, then c is the square root of 2. You square root on both sides? No, I'm saying. What? So it, to find the foci, what does c represent? c represents the distance from the center to the foci. Again, the foci is on the major axis. So again, you're going left and right. So your foci is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 comma negative 3. And the last thing you guys need to know is the covertices. The vertices and the foci and the center all lie on the major axis. They're all going left to right. That's why I'm all adding them left to right. But the covertices lie on the minor axis. So the covertices have a distance of um, our, P, our B from your center. So what was B? B is the square root of 3. But since they lie on the, or the minor axis, they're going to be up and down. So your covertices is going to be 2 comma negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3. Do you guys see why I'm adding the covertices to my y coordinate? Because the covertices go up and down because the minor axis is vertical. OK? That's it. Done. It's a big problem, but I'm glad you wrote it down.